Are you tired of waiting for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the Canon EOS R1, and the 35mm f1.4? Well, today we've got some really big news for you. We finally got some dates for the EOS R5 Mark II, the EOS R1, and the 35mm f1.4. Waiting for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the Canon EOS R1, or any lenses in 2024 has been, well, to say frustrating at the very least. We haven't received any credible specifications on any of these cameras, and in terms of the date range or pricing information, leaked images, well, we've got absolutely zippo. Well, at least until this morning. You see, thanks to Canon Rumors, we now have, well, we now have a, a date range for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, and it's going to be announced somewhere between May the 21st and May the 23rd. Now, we don't know the exact time, and we don't know which day it's going to be, and this could possibly be due to that international date line. But for now, according to Canon Rumors, we have the date of the Canon EOS R5 Mark II announcement. It's going to be in May, the end of May, not late April, nothing this month, not early May, but late May as we get ready for summer. And this puts it right in range with when we got the Canon EOS R5 Mark I at right around the four-year mark. If you recall, we actually had the official announcement of the Canon EOS R5 Mark II on July the 9th. Now, we did get teased. We had a development announcement back in February, and then Canon Australia came out and gave us some more information before really kind of letting the cat out of the bag at uh, NAB 2020, the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. So right up, by the time we got the official announcement, we knew everything there was to know about the Canon EOS R5. But this time around, we don't know anything about the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. Well, it's supposed to be 45 megapixels or 60, 61, or 62. It's supposed to have a backside illuminated sensor or a stacked sensor. And I could go on about all the specifications it's supposed to have from 8K video, but without any specifications of frame rates or codecs. And the same for 4K, the same for the ISO range, low light performance. Well, it's supposed to be able to do a burst mode of up to 60 frames per second, but for how long? And can it do 40 frames per second, 20 frames per second? Can it do 60 frames per second lossless RAW? We just don't really know. We don't know if it's gonna have dual CF Express Type B cards or a single card slot, and it's that dual CF Express Type B cards, there's only a single camera out there that can do that, and it's the 1DX Mark III, a one series camera. So now let's talk a little bit about the EOS R1. When are we getting an announcement of that camera? Well, again, Canon Rumors told us this morning through a tweet that we are getting a development announcement of the Canon EOS R1 in that same time frame, May the 21st to May the 23rd. And that's going to happen alongside the announcement of the Canon RF 35mm f1.4. So it's going to be a really big time for Canon customers to get the announcement. It's going to be a big focus. And, and this, this is where the frustration with the, the, uh, the leaks on this is when we go back to, I think it was supposed to be right around CP+, Plus, we were supposed to have the announcement of the EOS R5 Mark II. And then Canon rumors came out and told us, nope, the R1 is coming first but we're getting to the end of the second quarter. Most likely we won't have a full blown announcement of the Canon EOS R1 in the second quarter. It's probably gonna happen sometime in Q3. And what happens in Q3? Well, we have the 2024 Paris Olympics. So it's kind of a big surprise that we would just be getting a development announcement. If we get a development announcement, well, that tells us one thing that a full blown announcement isn't likely to happen until either late summer, and it is possible to have it in August. Canon has released a one series camera or announced a one series camera in August before. So that could certainly happen, or it could be September or the most likely time frame. if it's not in the summer, if it's not in August, would be October of 2024, completely missing the major sports venues of 2024 and frustrating a lot of people, although there is the Canon EOS R3. And that's one of the reasons why maybe Canon's not really see it in time for the Olympics, which would be a very big surprise because Canon always announces and releases the Canon or the One Series camera in time for the Olympics. So to do that, to miss it this year would be a surprise. But just because we get a development announcement on May the 21st to the 23rd, doesn't mean that it won't be available at the Olympics with a certain select group of photographers having this camera in their hands. And maybe it's just us general population folks 
we'll have to wait until the fall, or at least until the third quarter. We don't have any specifics. But, uh, but what I'm really kind of wondering here, because this is a tweet from Canon Rumors, it's not a regular post, at least not at the time of this recording. So I don't know if this is coming from validated known sources, if it's coming from retailers or distributors. I'd be surprised for Canon Rumors to release this if they didn't know, if this wasn't validated to some degree, because if this was wrong, or if they got this wrong, I think that would hurt their credibility. And and I, I and it's not that Craig or anybody at Canon Rumors is getting this wrong. It's just, it's more of that we've been teased an awful lot. We've seen a lot of, well, flip-flopping of specifications and other information regarding these cameras. And I think that goes back to Canon. Canon has been very good at protecting their information at containing leaks. So I've never seen this in, from Canon before. If we go back to 2020, 2021, 2019, 2018, well, Canon's information leaked like a sieve. It doesn't matter you were getting it from retailers, distributors, uh, the supply chain. It was just easy to cover Canon because there was so much information out there, but not here in 2024. So I'm going to kind of mark off my calendar for the 21st to the 23rd so that I can provide you with a live stream coverage. But at this point, I'm kind of 50-50 on whether this is going to happen or not. If it is going to happen at the end of May, that gives us, well, the better part of seven weeks. We should start to get leaked specifications very, very soon. I'm talking about in the next couple of weeks. If we don't have anything by NAB 2024, we should definitely have something after NAB 2024. And if we don't, well, that has me doubting these new dates. But the dates do seem well, credible and realistic. If we look at the history of the 5 Series and the 1 Series, the 1 Series is always released every four years. And even though it might be a little bit late this year, we're still on schedule. And the Canon EOS R5, the 5 Series camera, well, it's right on schedule. It, they, Canon refreshes that camera anywhere between three to four years normally. And here we are coming up to the four-year mark, just shy of the four-year mark. Yeah, but... I, I know what you're thinking. Yes, we did have to wait five years for the R5, but to be fair, an awful lot happened. First of all, they're switching from a completely different mount from the, um, I was going to say the E mount, but that's Sony, from the EF mount to the RF mount. And then, of course, uh, starting in the first quarter and then really building up into the second quarter, we had a major world disruption to the supply chains, e economic world order, everything just kind of went crazy. And um, I won't blame that disruption for the going to five years from four years because they could have released it back in 2019. But an awful lot was going on with the mount and with the development that I um, that's the only time we had to wait five years for a five series. Three to four years is normal. We got the announcement back in July. But going back to January the 27th, when we got the first full set of detailed leak specifications for the R5 Mark I, Wow, within three to four weeks, Canon released a development announcement. Then about three to four weeks after that, Canon Australia came out and said the king is back on a Facebook post. Then at NAB 2020, we also had a big announcement by Canon where they spent time talking about the R5 despite being an event aimed at broadcasters and cinema cameras before just waiting about another month and a half to two months before getting the full-blown announcement. So... We at least have a date range right now. Are you excited by that? I'm certainly excited by that. I already published a video this morning about the 35 millimeter F1.4. It's a 1.4, it's not a 1.2. It's an L series. There's no mention if it's image stabilized or not. There's no mention on pricing. One thing I'm thinking, if it's going to F1.4 instead of F1.2, maybe that'll take a little bit of the pricing pressure off and maybe it won't be as heavy. Maybe they'll use all those patent applications that talk about weight reduction in this as well, because I have the uh, 50 millimeter F1.2 and it's, it's pretty heavy. It's not impossible to walk around with. It's the number one lens that I shoot with, but the, um, I, I wouldn't mind if it was just a little bit lighter. It makes the, the camera a little bit top heavy, but it, it doesn't get in the way with how I shoot in any way whatsoever. And sometimes that weight actually comes in handy if you're shooting video because it helps keep things stable. The heavier the kit, well, the more stable your footage becomes. So, what do you think? Do you think we're gonna get the announcement of the R5 Mark II, May the 21st to the 23rd? 
a development announcement for the R1 and the 35mm f1.4 coming at the same time. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Let's start, um, let's start a bit of a pool as to who thinks it's going to come and when. And what about the specifications? What do you actually think we're going to get in terms of specifications? The only thing I'm 100% sure about is that this camera is going to have much improved low light performance and dynamic range. And I'm pretty sure, again, I could be wrong here. This is just my conjecture. I'm pretty sure it's going to have a stack sensor. I'd be really surprised with the Nikon Z8 being out for two years and having a stack sensor and a lot of cameras in this price point having them. I'd be surprised if it doesn't, but at the very least, I would expect a BSI sensor. Being around 45 to 50 megapixels also makes sense. I don't really see 61, 62, or 60, although a lot of the rumors leading up until the early part of 2024 were leading us down that path. And in terms of video, 8K60 is what it currently has raw. I wouldn't be surprised to see that expand up to 60 or 120 frames per second, especially if the Canon EOS R1 doesn't touch 8K video, if it's right around 30 megapixels. Again, we have so many questions, don't we? And so few answers. But I'm just rambling on here. It's Monday morning. I had a really great weekend. I didn't shoot any videos. I was actually out shooting run and gun, testing a new gimbal from a company that I'm not going to mention. And of course, I was out there with a 200 to 800 millimeter getting some really terrific shots. Believe it or not here, I'm shooting at 200 millimeters and it just looks absolutely dreamy. The colors look great. The depth of field looks terrific. It's an incredible lens, uh, but I was primarily trying to shoot wildlife and not my son, but um, it was the lens I had. So I wanted to see what I could do with it. And um, I continue to be impressed with the 200 to 800. If we go back to the 800 millimeter F11, you had 800 millimeters at F11. And the only way to get, well, F22, or let's say F14, 15, or 16, was to use a 1.4 extender or a two times extender with this 200 to 800. If you're not shooting wildlife and you wanna bring it back a little bit, you know, you can shoot at 200 millimeters and get some pretty good close up stuff. So I, I'm, so far I'm pretty impressed with it. I'm gonna do a full review at some point, but I don't have enough footage at this point. Spring has really just got under, gotten underway here. We don't have a lot of wildlife back yet, although it's much better than before. We get to hear the birds and it's wonderful. Um, and I nabbed this shot briefly of some swans flying in, but it was just, I, I was at a blind and I can only catch a very small portion of it, but it really turned out well. I plan to get a lot more as the tulips and daffodils start to come up as the grass starts to green. It's gonna create a much better looking environment that is just gonna frame the wildlife a whole lot better. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Oh, one other thing too, if you are interested in buying the Canon EOS R5 Mark I, it's still on sale, $29.99 at Adorama, b and at Amazon.com. And at Adorama, they're still tossing in a 128 gigabyte SanDisk CF Express Type B card and a card reader and a whole bunch of lenses are on sale. And if you're interested in purchasing the R5 Mark I at Adorama, b &H, or Amazon.com, anywhere in the United States, I do have my affiliate links down below for b &H, Amazon and Adorama uh, if you want to get this deal because um, it's pretty, even four years, four years after buying this camera, over 1300 videos, tens of thousands of shots, it doesn't feel like it's getting tired and that it's ready to give up the ghost. And I, even though I look to the Z8 and seeing some of its capabilities and go like, wow, that's, that's got some nice improvements over the R5. I don't feel like the R5 is in any way a letdown. And the Nikon Z8 is also $300 off, $3,000. The camera came out for $38.99. Uh, that's a big savings in price. And I'm seeing sales in Canada, the United States or Canada, uh, the UK, Europe, uh, Australia, and New Zealand. So it's not as expensive as it was when it was first announced. So keep that in mind. Um, and for everybody that has used my affiliate links in the past, a big thank you. I really do appreciate it. It's really helped this channel grow. And uh, I'm getting excited now just a little bit because we're finally getting some dates on these cameras. I know it's not the first time we were supposed to get an announcement right around CP Plus, and that turned out not to be true. So yes, please take this with a grain of salt. And for those of you still watching at this part in the video, thank you so much for watching to the end. Have yourself a great week and we'll see you again soon.